Hi, welcome to T3 Teach Tech Theater. I'm Kirsten Giard Branch. And I'm Julie Benitez. And we are here today to talk about something fabulous that is going to change your life in terms of organization. And this was Julie's plan and Julie's idea, so we're going to let Julie talk about it. Go! So many years ago, um, I realized that although I remembered what all of the pieces of furniture came from or props came from, um, when I told a kid to go find me that chair we used 12 years ago, they had no idea which chair I was talking about because they weren't here 12 years ago. Um, rather than me trying in vain to explain exactly what that piece looks like, I happened upon the idea of having all of the kids, I had a, a certain group of kids that were very good at organization. I had them pull every piece of furniture out of the furniture shed, take a photo of each chair, each cabinet, each rug, each everything. And then I simply put it in a photo album so that I was able to go flip, 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 flip. This one, this one right here, go bring me this one. And I didn't have a big photo album, by the way. It's a small photo album so that um, it wasn't unwieldy. So I could literally send it with the children of like, go find this one right now. Um, so they could look and go, is that, oh no, that one's mostly red. And that one's blue, not that one, so that they can look at the things. And this has changed my life. Um, I also tried doing it with the photo with the props. I had a student who uh, went and photographed everything, um, but it ended up being on computer. And I'm gonna say I think I prefer it better on photos, in actual physical photos. Uh, so I don't have to go look and then open and then open and then open and then look and find it. I'm just like, here, here's the thing right here, this one. Kirsten took it a step further um, by making sure it was a yearly task. And one of the things that I do with mine then is that in addition to actually having the photo, I've also measured. So I have jotted down what the height, width and depth is of each of the pieces of furniture so that I know if I'm going in, ah, that chair might look nice. Oh, no, dear God, that's huge. That's not going to work. Just so I have that. And in addition to that, I had um, a prop crew that would be responsible for at the end of the year, after all the shows and such, flipping through. And if we had, say, taken a chair and it was blue and now it's red, we took a picture of the red chair and the red chair photograph ended up in the photo album so that we didn't have kids running around searching for a blue chair that didn't exist anymore. So it was an updating process for this. It's been fantastic, especially now with me at my new school and I had gone through, gutted everything, rearranged everything, nothing is where it was. Students, honestly, that were there before didn't kind of have a, a clue as to what all was there anyway, because it was a little bit of everywhere, but now it is organized. I have three exterior sheds and each one of them has a purpose. So that here's the chair shed and here's the table shed. And the, so all of that is organized. But in addition to that, then we've got the flip through, grab me this. It has been a godsend to my program. And I have that for props and I have that for furniture. I will say that it is important to be very specific with your students when you're talking about doing things like a photo inventory or inventorying props. Several years ago, I sent a very lovely student. He's a wonderful, wonderful student and a great guy. And he had his prop crew. And the our prop storage at my old school was in a totally different part of the school itself. It wasn't uh, at, in the theater at all. And I sent he and his prop crew for a week to go inventory the props. So because you know how it is, you, things just keep growing in there. And uh, you turn around and you're like, there's 7,500 things I didn't know that I had. And they're all in a pile. So their job was to pull everything out, clean it, organize it, and put it all back in. At the end of the week, he came up to me and he said, 792. And I said, what? And he said, 792. And I said, what are you telling me? And he said, you wanted me to inventory the props, right? We counted them all. You have 792. And bless his and his crew's little cotton socks, as Julie would say, because they all had Sharpies and they put numbers on the bottom or on the sides of every single prop in that closet. So for years, I would go and pull, especially the prop food, that was the best was I had a big vat of, you know, the plastic prop food. And inevitably, I'd pick up one and like at the bottom of a burger was like the number six. 
So it was like this in, in perpetuity, this student was always there in my mind because everything that he and his crew touched that year had a Sharpie number on it. I prefer actually the photo method versus the Sharpie numbers. <laughs> Just saying. But it's a really good idea, um, you know, when you're going into a prop shed that you've got it labeled out in your areas of like, is this office supply or these uh, kitchen supplies? And then you always have the miscellaneous things that are like, this was in this one show and will never be used again. So we don't really know what to do with that. Um, but to have photos of each one of them. So a kid knows what they're looking for when they go in. Cause honestly, there are, there have been times that the kid didn't know what I was asking for. I asked someone for a, um, a reel to reel. I know I had a reel to reel in there, uh, a reel to reel tape thing. And they brought me any number of things um, before I had the picture of it because they didn't know. They brought me like a boom box. They brought me um, something that looked like an old, uh, uh, some sort of typewriter thing. And I, I'm like, oh, you have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? <laughs> Let's get a picture. Picture's worth a thousand words and it's going to save your sanity. So we say, thank you, Julie. You are a genius for creating the idea of that photo inventory. I will say that one of the places where this type of photo inventory just didn't work for me was costumes. And if you're anything like Julie and I, you, you have tons of costumes, 8,000 men's white shirts. Uh, and, and initially I even bought one of those really fancy, um, uh, things that you see online where you can iron on the bar barcode on the back and it'll be a computer inventory of all the sizes and such. Well, that made my head blow off my body and it just plain didn't work. So for me, photo inventory does not work for costumes. But you can still organize your costume shed or costume place, wherever it is. I know that in mine, I definitely have, you know, here you have men's suits that are complete. You've got long dresses, you've got formal dresses, historical, stuff like that. Um, and I have been trying every time we try to pull it out and clean it um, to label what they all are, at least that it's my school's initials on it. I do for sure whenever I lend it to another school, I make sure that our initials are on it so that we can, I know that that helps me when I had borrowed someone else's of like, was that mine? Was that there? Oh, look, it says it on there. Fantastic. Let me send it back to them. Um, but something that did work for me in the costume shed was when I know I have a whole bunch of something, like she said, a gazillion white uh, men's shirts or a bunch of black men's pants. I know, how many waiters can I need, right? Um, rather than taking up the space with hangers for all of those pants or shirts, I often put them in a big tub and then label the tub. Um, I do have my white shirts up. I don't have as many as she had, but I have a tub of black pants, black men's pants. And I have like a whole tub of 1950s um, schoolgirl skirts uh, because that takes up so much space. And I have a lot of it because I, you know, once you do one or two shows that have 1950s, you accumulate a lot of them. So I didn't need a whole space for them. I just have a tub, bring the whole tub out. And you're like, all right, girls, find skirts that fit you. Everything else, put it back in the tub and I will take the tub back into the costume thing. So I don't have a bunch of kids in the costume shed because that is a recipe for disaster. If you have not learned this lesson already, it should only be you, the costume supervisor or the costume crew that goes in there, do not let the others in. They, it's, I got to touch it. I got to play with it. Same with props. I, I tell the students that I have a, a, a trap for them. And they're like, you do? I'm like, oh yeah, there's a trap in the props. And it's a child's accordion. If you are not on the props thing, you will automatically must pick up that accordion and you must play it. And I can hear someone's not supposed to be there. They've touched the accordion. I, it, it's, it's, it just works. But the kids want to always in the costume. They want to put on the costumes. They want to do everything. And then they're going to make a big mess. So make sure that there's only a very few people who are allowed in. And one of the other things, too, that Julie and I both do is we have kind of the, the, the stuff prop-wise that we don't want students to have access to. Right. So I have a forbidden shed that has the wigs, the swords, 
Um, specific costumes that I think either go to an iconic show that will walk away, like my leather jackets are in the Forbidden Shed, not in the regular costume area. But I also have like my entire costume thing for the Wiz, like all the pieces that I don't want to get lost. You know, I've got the Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and they're all there as a unit so that if there's another school in my area that are like, hey, you did that. Do you have those costumes? I know exactly where they are. Um, Kirsten and I are very fortunate that the, the teachers in our particular district, there's about eight of us, um, get along well together. And we have shared stuff of like, hey, you did that show. Uh, I was lucky to, actually, I think originally it was at Granite from before your time. That's where I got the car for Greece. We have the front end of a car for Grease Lightning. And I think that that car has been used at at least six schools. And currently it's in a school one at San Diego Unified. Um, but people just know in the area, hey, you have that car, right? And that adds to community and helping each other out also. Because there are so many things that in theater, you know, it's a, a weird prop. It's a weird thing that nobody else will have. But you're like, hey, have you already made that? Do you, do you have the thing for pulled from Adam's family? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what do you have? that why reinvent the wheel if somebody might have it in their props. That sense of community is so important, connecting with other theater teachers that are going to help bail you out for those really, really weird, weird things. Well, there's one that's traveling around San Diego County somewhere, right? So that's yep. what we want to make sure that we, we encourage you to kind of find that and find your peeps. And as always, we hope that these tips are helping you to just kind of frame your brain maybe a little bit differently. It's always good to bounce ideas off other folks. And that's why we wanted to share all of these different hacks with you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at teachtechtheater at gmail.com. Check out our website and become a member at www.teachtechtheater.org. And we will look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.